Good morning, Josh. I'm glad you are excited to learn about frogs today. Um, welcome everybody to your Saturday virtual keeper chat from Buttonwood Park Zoo here in New Bedford, Massachusetts. My name is Carrie, and today, as you may have guessed, we are going to be focusing on our poison dart frogs. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Tom. Um, and we have a new keeper with us today. We are joined by our keeper, Bruce. Tom is asking where Bruce is, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to Bruce, who's going to tell us a little bit about poison dart frogs. And then, as always, we will open it up to questions um, from the audience. Go ahead, Bruce. All right, good morning, everybody. We're going to start by feeding the frogs today, and then I'll give you a little intro, and then we'll open it up to questions. And we're going to give them fruit flies today. Can we see the fruit flies? Mm. And they are coated with a vitamin. All right, cool. So Bruce is going to go ahead and put some fruit flies in there. And then he'll tell us a little bit about the species that we have. Hopefully they'll come right up to the front for us to see them. I can see some bright colored things moving around right now. All right, so do you want to tell us what species we are seeing in here? We have four species of poison dart frogs in this exhibit. Right now you're looking at the Azurius species, which is also called the, the blue poison dart frog. What about that green guy in the back there? The green guy is called the green and black poison dart frog, also known as an erratus. Okay. And then those larger black guys with the yellow stripes there. Those are called tinctorious, or also known as a dying poison dart frog. And then we also have one other one, which is a small, a small species. It's called the yellow banded poison dart frog, also known as a leucamella. There's five of those guys in there, but I don't see any. Oh, right. this one, this one right under this leaf right here. Get a little picture of his face there. So, so these guys, these guys are considered amphibians. They're part of the class of amphibians. Um, and there's, there's three characteristics that define an animal as an amphibian. Um, one is that they're a vertebrate, they have a backbone. Um, two is that they're cold-blooded, so they, they take on the, the temperature of their surroundings. And three is that they lived part of their life in the water, breathing through gills and then the other part of their life on land, breathing with lungs. And there's actually the 7,000 species of amphibians in the world, and over 100 of them are poison dart frog species. And where would we find poison dart frog species? These guys live in Central and South America, um, so their habitat would be something like you're seeing here. They, they live in rainforest habitats, um, among leaf litter, and they're looking for moist areas. Cool. So what would you say is their best, you know, adaptations for living in the rainforest? Um, well, this, this particular species needs, needs uh, warm temperatures and they need, they need a moist environment. Um, a good a good fact about these guys is um, is to talk about their talk about their diet. So their their diet in the wild consists of of ants, centipedes, and termites. Um, and they actually they they sequester chemicals from those from those um, insects that actually gives them their poison. So they they their poison is on their skin. The guys actually in this exhibit are, are captive bred um, poison dot frogs. So they actually don't have any poison because they don't they don't eat those termites and um, the insects that they get in South America. We feed them fruit flies and, and crickets and stuff which don't have the chemicals that they need to, to synthesize the poison. So the guys in this exhibit actually aren't poisonous. All right, so we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of true frog lovers here asking a lot of great questions. So we'll just jump right into those. Um, Wayne, age eight, wants to know would these frogs or Poison dart frogs in the wild, as you said, these ones are not poisonous, but when, would the ones in the wild be able to kill us? 
It depends on the species. Um, there, there's a frog called the golden poison frog, which is which is one of the most poisonous ones. That that would, could probably kill you. Um, maybe if you if you ate it, I'm not. If you if you ate the frog, it could definitely kill you. Um, and that that's a big that's a big thing with um, the the color of this species. It kind of reminds animals in the wild. Once they once they eat or touch this animal, they they remember not to touch it again. Um, as far as these guys are concerned, these guys touching these in the wild probably wouldn't kill you, but it's it's going to be a painful experience for sure. You'll get you'll get some swelling, some nausea, things like that. Do people in the rainforest ever use their poison for anything? That's how they got their name originally. Um, way back when, indigenous people in South America um, used used the poison to kind of tip, uh, put it on the tip of blow darts. So they, when they would go hunt with the blow dart, the, um, when the dart would hit an animal, it would kind of paralyze the animal a little bit. Excellent. Thank you, Aaron, for your donation. We really appreciate that. Um, Tom wants to know if frogs make a good pet. Uh, frogs can make a good pet um, if you take care of them properly. They're, they're mostly a hands-off pet. Um, you don't you don't want to be handling them because um, it, it's they pretty much absorb everything through their skin. So any kind of nasty stuff you have in your hands, they're gonna they're gonna absorb it into their skin. So if you're if you're good with a hands off animal, and you can you do your research on you know the things that they need, the requirements that they need. Like these guys, for example, we have we have a mist machine that mists the exhibit every every two hours. Um, we have a little pump that's pumping water that keeps the soil moist. We have a light. We have lighting that's on a timer as well. Um, so as long as you do your research and you you can take care of the animal properly, then then it could make a good pet. As long as you're you're okay with being hands off. Great. Riley, age two, wants to know how long these types of frogs would live. In the wild, there's there's not a lot of information on how long they live in the wild, but in captivity. It seems to be like 10 to 15 years is is about the sweet spot for what they are along the way. Okay. Um, why are they all different colors? Uh, Sarah, age six, would like to know. So that's because there there's four different species in here, um, and each each individual frog, the the markings on the frog are, are all unique to each frog. So there's actually 19 frogs in here, and we can tell we can tell them all apart. They all have very unique markings. Kind of like our fingerprints, so each of their spots is unique to them? Yes, yes. Interesting. Uh, and actually, a couple of the frogs in here, we actually, um, we were, these frogs actually pretty consistently lay eggs in here. There was some eggs up in the, on a leaf. They lay their eggs on leaves. There's actually some leaves, uh, some eggs, all well, the remnants of some eggs right there. Um, on that leaf in the top corner. Um, so they, they do tend to lay, lay their eggs on leaves and then once once the eggs hatch and become tadpoles, the tadpoles actually climb on mom and dad's back and mom and dad bring bring the, the tadpoles to the to water. Um, and we actually did grow up a couple a couple of the guys that are in here are actually tad eggs that we collected and we grew them up from tadpoles. Um, Cindy would like to know who in the wild would eat a frog? Uh, for this particular species, there's, all, there's, only one, there's only one species of snake um, in South America that actually has adapted, has immunity to, adapt, adapted immunity to eating these guys to the poison um, for the frogs. So there is a snake that it can, can actually eat these guys. But a lot of different animals can eat, could eat a frog, um, assuming that it, it doesn't have the poison. Could, uh, Kaiden age nine wants to know, can a poison dart frog get poison from another dart frog? Because we see them kind of touching each other a lot here. <laughs> it's a good, that's a good question. It's a good question. I never, I never really thought about that, but they, um, they have immunity, um, to their, to their, to the poison basically. So, um, that's why they, they kind of can't poison them, themselves. They, they have immunity to, to the poison. So I'm assuming it would be when they're touching each other, they probably have immunity to, to the other frogs. I'm noticing that um, the different types, the different species we have in here, especially the yellow banded, seems to be a little shyer. Do they have different, I don't want to use the word personality, but different 
behaviors species to species? Yeah, they the um, the yellow bandits tend to they tend to stay up higher um, in this exhibit. I've noticed, um, and the um, the the green and black ones tend to be a little shy as well. But those those two are the smaller the smaller species in this exhibit, so it could have to it could have to do with the fact that they're smaller. The other two species are much more are much more active, and they, they spend a lot a lot of time on the on the ground in the exhibit too. So it might have to do with the fact that that um, the uh, the yellow banded and the green and black are smaller. There are a lot of wrestling matches that go on in this exhibit too between the frogs, and that is a territorial thing. So that that's what makes me assume that. The smaller ones tend to stay stay higher up top and are more shy than the than the larger ones. Okay, Ryan H two is wondering about their behavior in terms of sleeping. Do, when do they sleep? How often do they sleep? So most frogs are nocturnal, uh, but these guys are actually diurnal, so they're they're active during the day. So they're they're a good frog to have um, on exhibit. Um, Ryan, age nine, would like to know: Do we name each of the frogs? <laughs> uh, that we actually, yes, yes, we <laughs> we do have um, we do have weird we have weird names for them just to tell, just to kind of tell them apart. Um, the names kind of just we kind of just picked a characteristic of of the pattern on their on their skin there. So they have very odd names, but yes, they do <laughs> they do have names. Great. Um, are are the how do we tell a male from a female? Good question. I, I honestly I don't know. I do not know. Uh, so just um, for those of you who are just joining us, we're with Bruce, and we have four species of poison dart frogs in this exhibit. Um, they are eating some fruit flies right now. Do they get anything other than fruit flies? We give them fruit flies and then pinhead crickets, just a little, a little type of cricket. All right. Um, Diana wants to know if they're an endangered species. Yes, yes. Some of the some of the poison dart frogs are. Um, a lot of amphibians are either threatened or or endangered. Um, and there's there's different different types of reasons for that. Um, irresponsible pet trade, um, habitat loss. And there's also um, there's also disease too. The, the most common disease for the for the dot frogs it's it's called citric fungus, um, chytrid fungus. Sorry about that. Um, and it kind of um, it kind of covers their body, and it doesn't allow them to to absorb water through their skin there. So they kind of like they kind of like suffocate almost. Um, Sophia, age six. That's a good question. Does the tadpoles have poison? No, the tadpoles would not have poison because um, the tadpoles are eating are eating different things in the water um, before they before they actually become a frog. So they have to eat the 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 ants, the termites, the stuff like that on land where they can where they actually have the chemicals that that can help them make the poison. Can you talk a little bit? I'm noticing they have kind of funny shaped feet. Do those help them at all? Yes. Yeah, it, it helps them just just moving around, getting around. It help them to stick and climb. Exactly. Um, how long does it take for a tadpole to become a full size frog? For these guys, once once it's it takes it takes the eggs about two to three weeks to hatch um, into a tadpole, and then the tadpole to become. To become an adult that can live out of the water, it's about it's a, it's a couple months. It's a couple months. Ryan, age twelve, wants to know: Do the different species interact with each other other than just kind of what we're seeing now? Would they ever breed with each other or fight or anything like that? Yes. Yeah. They they can do they can do some interbreeding and they can do um they have they have wrestling matches all the time. I haven't really seen much since we since we started filming, but they they will. They will climb right up on top of each other, um, and it's, it's a territorial thing when they're when they're wrestling. In the wild, do they live in groups or are they pretty solitary? These guys live in groups. They live in groups, and they they do they do a lot of work taking care of their of their 
they're young, like I like I mentioned before, like um, when the eggs hatch, mom and dad usually um, carry them on their back to a to a water source, and they actually will help feed the tadpoles. Great. Um, you've been talking a lot about what great parents they are, and our friend, our our the camp director Sarah is commenting in here and reminding me that we have virtual zoo camp coming up next week that is um, themed extreme parents and so one of the animals we'll be focusing on is actually the poison dart frog sarah thank you for the reminder um, so if you are not aware you can go on our website and actually register or download the activities it's a week-long um, activi daily activities with videos and things to do from home to follow along as though we were together with zoo crew so sarah thank you for reminding us about that Isabella, age seven, wants to know, would they spray out their poison to hunt, or is it just if they get eaten? She's talking about the frogs. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the poison is just on their skin, so it, it's, basically, it's basically transmitted like, by that. You have to, you'd have to touch them. They don't actually spray it like, like, um, like some other animals would. Okay, Jake, age 11, has a really good question. Um, so if you were to get those termites or the things that make them poisonous and fed them to these animals, would they then become poisonous? Yes, and it's, it's, it's um, no one's 100% sure where they, actually, where they actually get the, uh, the poison from. It's, just, it's, it's basically assumed that it must come from the, from the food that they're getting. But yes, if I, if I went down to South America right now and collected and collected, um, and collected the um, the termites and the ants that they usually eat and brought them here, then they could they could start to, to make their poison again. Thank you, Beth, for your donation. We really appreciate that. Um, Julie, thank you. She says this is her favorite zookeeper chat so far. You must be a huge fan of frogs. Um, how high can they jump? Ryland, age four, would like to know. I don't have an exact um, measure in inches or feet for that, but they. They are pretty pretty good leapers, um, and these guys these guys tend to stay on the leaf litter at the bottom of the forest, but they do um, they do venture venture upwards as well. But I have seen them make some make some pretty good jumps, like the length of this of this exhibit here. But I don't have an exact figure for you. Do they make noises like our frogs we have here? In yes, when America? I when I came in this morning, these guys these guys were calling quite a bit. They're, they're quiet right now, probably because they're happy because they because they ate. But this morning they were they were calling quite a bit. And would you say they're better jumpers or climbers? I would say these guys these guys tend to to climb to climb up um, up the up the branches in here. I don't. I, I I assume that's how they that's how they move for the for the most part. Uh, we have some friends asking how we got these frogs where they came from good question i can't remember exactly we, we got them from another institution another zoo so these were these were captive bred frogs i don't remember exactly where where they came from uh roby age 34 would like to know do they change colors over their life or do they stay the same they they stay the same they stay the same these guys don't have any any color change or anything like and when they come out as tadpoles, are they colorful like this? Yes. Yeah. You can see it's it's pretty cool when they're when they're growing up as a tadpole. Like you don't you don't know what which species you're gonna get, and you, you kind of see them you kind of see them morph and develop their color um, over the over the two or three months that it takes. Um, but once yeah once they once they become a frog, they they just grow bigger. They already have they have the um, the pattern that they're gonna, that they're gonna have and the colors that they're gonna have. Interesting. Um, Sophia, age six, was asking um, about how they use their poison to attack their prey. So do you want to explain again, the poison isn't necessarily to catch food, but rather to protect themselves? Yeah, it's, it's more to ward off predators. Um, and they just, it's, they just secrete it through their skin, basically. So if, so if you know, like a, a predator ate them, um, they're no, they're not, that predator is not going to be feeling well for a while. And like I like I mentioned before, they're gonna remember due to like the the bright coloring and stuff. They're gonna remember that this that they ate this frog and that they didn't feel well afterwards. So that's gonna make them stay away from these frogs in the future. Yeah. All right. 
so these guys are full grown. Can you give us a sense of how big they are since we can't really tell by camera? Uh, I don't know if we could. So the, uh, the, the two smaller there. species, the yellow banded and the, uh, the green and black, those guys are probably about a little bigger than an inch, I would say. So like, I'm gonna say they could sit on top of a dollar, <laughs> a coin dollar. Yeah, yeah. Not a little bigger than a quarter maybe. And then I would say the, the two bigger species, the, um, the Erratus and the Tinctorius, those guys, um, those guys are about two to two and a half inches in length. Ooh, Julie, I'm sorry, Ryan, age 12, that's a great question. Do they have a good memory? What's the, what is their intelligence like? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know too much about that. Um, I, can, I can tell you they definitely know when it's, when it's feeding time. Um, they, they start coming closer to the door where I have to, where I have to put the, the food in there. So they, they definitely know when it's feeding time. Um, and they, they, are, they, they do seem pretty intelligent. Um, like, like we mentioned before, they, they, do, they do take care of, of the tadpoles and stuff. Um, as far as, you know, remembering certain things, like I, I don't know too much about their memory in general. All right, do you want to talk a little bit about our, our native frogs and kind of compare these guys or talk a little bit about what we could find in our own backyards? Uh, in your own backyards, you can, there's, there's various frogs that you can find. Um, you know, you, you, have, you have your green frogs, gray tree frogs, spring peepers, um, stuff like that. Uh, the, the differences would be, um, you know, the, the frogs around here don't have any poison like these guys do in South America. Um, and the, these frogs, the, the poison dot frogs are pretty small compared to, compared to most of the frogs around here. And they're certainly not nearly as bright colored as, as yeah, you that, find in the rainforest. That as well. Um, how old are these frogs? Good question. These these particular guys, I don't have an exact age, but I've been working at the zoo for almost six years, and we've we've had them for most of the time that I've been here. So these guys, these guys are at least five or six years old, and um, the captive bred frogs usually will live like ten to fifteen years. Excellent. Um, and just piggybacking off of the topic of native species of frogs i do want to give a plug for our virtual frog watch program so we do have a citizen science program called frog watch where you can get trained to monitor your local frogs and toads um, and collect data and submit that data for scientists which is really important as bruce said at the beginning of this there's a lot of threats to amphibian species worldwide and so being able to send citizen scientists out to collect data when scientists just don't have enough time or resources to do that is really important that's a really easy easy thing to do. You basically go out once a week during breeding season uh, after dark and listen for the calls of the frogs and toads and give back that data to us. Um, we will be posting about that on our website very soon. We are turning that into an actual virtual program so you'll be able to go through the training virtually um, and then connect with us for a quick test. Um, so I highly recommend if you love toads and frogs to look into that a little bit more. We did have some questions speaking of toads. What's the difference between a toad and a frog? A toad and a frog? Or I, are these, these guys are not toads. These guys are not toads. I, I don't know much about toads, honestly, in general. Well, that is a great question that does get answered during the virtual frog watch training. So if you are interested in that, uh, maybe become a frog watcher and you'll learn all about that. Um, all right, I think we've answered everybody's questions. We hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. Thank you so much to those of you who have donated. Your donations help us with the Zoological Society to keep our education and conservation programs going while we don't have visitors on site to um, have revenue coming in. So we really appreciate that support. We will be back tomorrow with another edition of our virtual Keeper Chats. I wanna thank Bruce um, for joining us this morning and teaching us all about our poison dart frogs. And we will see you all tomorrow. Thank you.